everybody. I'm Chrissy Carr. I'm an adult librarian at the West Los Angeles Public Library, and I'm here to introduce today's Maker Talk. Oops, sorry. We are, how about that? Sorry. Uh, today, uh, as I said, we're, I'm here to introduce today's Maker Talk, but first I want to take a moment to thank our Library Foundation and the other behind the scenes staff for helping us bring these virtual programs to you. Uh, I'd also like to invite everyone to participate in our Los Angeles Public Library first ever LA, um, LAPL Bio Blitz Challenge. Uh, your participation can really help the city's effort to help protect wildlife and their habitats in the neighborhood. To participate, please visit lapl.org slash bioblitz. And I'll put some of these links I'm gonna talk about um, in the chat as well. Um, so, and also make sure you keep checking out our uh, online calendar. And I know some of you found us through that, um, but we regularly update that. So you can find that at lapl.org slash events. There's lots of amazing programs and um, fun things to do at uh, the downtown library and all the different branches as well, no matter what the age. So let's move on to our Maker Talk. What is a Maker Talk? Well, today's uh, program uh, features a particular maker, but makers can be from any background from LA and beyond who make things. A maker can be someone who builds Mars rovers, robots. They can embrace traditional techniques of woodworking, knitting, wine, or pillow making. Um, makers are innovators. They hack and repurpose existing or outdated technologies, equipment, and knowledge, and take what we already knew and give it a new use and life. So if you or anyone you know who are makers uh, would like to join in this program, you can fill out a presenter interest form. And, that's, um, and we'll put that link in the chat as well. We'd love to feature you in a future talk. But for tonight, we're going to... Um, we're gonna be talking to Keo O'Hara. Keo is the driving force behind Dragon 88. She is a designer and a founder of this design firm that collaborates with hospitality design firms to conceptualize and create their vision in textile products. She has an extensive fashion background as a retail merchant and product developer at Saks Fifth Avenue, Henry Bendel, and Associated Merchandising Corporation, and as the vice president of merchandising at Esprit, where she merchandised and managed an $800 million business. She has a Bachelor of Arts dual degree in communication and art from Syracuse University and a master's in business and administration from marketing and Hofstra University. So let's all welcome Keo O'Hara, please. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. And uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, speak for the Maker Talk. And uh, the topic today is sustainability and design. And we have a focus on digital printing. And so I get a million questions about sustainability because obviously it's the topic. It's uh, getting all the press right now. And the global definition of it is really the Earth's biosphere and how it intersects with human civilization and how it coexists together. And the three components, which many companies and locations are dealing with right now are economic viability, uh, environmental protection, and obviously social equity, which is making headlines due to uh, e uh, equal rights in race, ethnic, cultural uh, differences, in one department or in one location. And what we're gonna be dealing with is digital printing, which really is focused in economic and environmental protection. And it's a process that I had been watching since late 90s, because when I used to visit print studios to buy patterns for fashion, we used to buy these print studios and they started doing digital prints, short runs, and it was still too expensive at the time. So I felt that it wasn't viable yet to do production. So we watched it for probably until 2003. And about that time, I took some tours of some digital printing facilities and found that 
it was becoming more economical, it was more cost effective, and that we could probably introduce it for our custom hospitality. Um, and to give a little overview on the process, uh, digital printing is actually very interesting because it's almost something that you're very familiar with, except for on a larger scale. Digital printing is like your computer that's at home, but it's a much bigger run because there's two formats. There's one that runs for 60 inches across fabric, and then there's grand format, which is double the size, and it's really used for curtains or backdrops. And we utilize a lot of digital printing because with the custom work, you don't have the minimums that you have with screen printing and rotary printing, which normally it's like 2,000 to 3,000 yards that you have to uh, use and utilize. And these are done on plates and screen prints, and it gets very, very expensive to do this. And it also uses a lot of electrical as well as water consumption. So to give you an idea as to the process, and then we'll get into the sustainability elements of it, we work in very high definition um, images. So all the artwork, it's called uh, 300 DPI is the minimum. And what that means is dots per square inch. So when you're doing it, it's actually the more dots that are there, the more detail that you get in the design. And we use very, very large files to do this. And what we do is when we create the digital files, we then download it to the computer. Um, but there's more steps involved with this because what we also do for fabric, we think about doing a repeat. And repeat basically helps us, if we know the repeat of a one pattern, then we know that how much we need for fabric uh, usage. So I actually have this, and this is like one repeat. Oh, can Hang you on. see? Nope, oh, it's on me, there we go. Okay, so this actually one, Repeat is from the top of the design to the bottom of the design. In this case, it's the top of this, the caladium leaf, and then the yellow orchid. And then the second repeat is the one down below. And this is important to realize because when we run these prints, and we will see it in the video, we can actually measure how, how long and how much we need. So in this case, let's say from here to here, it's like two feet. We know for, if we're running like a hundred of each of these four patterns, then we do the multiplier on it. So it's very easy to figure out yields. And so when you look at fabrics, you often see the width of the fabric, which is 60 inches, 54 inches is usually what it is. And then it will give, a, it will say repeat and it will say 16 by 18 inches. So let's say this is like four inches across until this part and then four inches down. So this is like one repeat because actually this is each file is one artwork file and then we have combined them to create a repeat. And then sometimes we do all over designs, which is like an entire fabric pattern. Um, and we'll show you some concepts, some ideas of that. And as far as sustainability, why it was so attractive to many people doing digital printing is because when we would do the, um, when you actually look at it, there's so much water that is used to clean off the plates and each color takes a plate for screen printing and rotary. And then with digital printing, all you're doing is it's just the artwork that goes into the computer. So you don't have all of this wastage and metal plates and screens. And so on top of that, when you think about all of the washing that goes into this, um, a good example to give you kind of hard and fast numbers is that 40 to 50 liters of water are used for one meter. One meter is about 39 inches, close to a yard. Uh, a little bit more than a yard, obviously, but um, that's a lot of water compared to digital printing, which is 10 liters. So when you look at this, they did an analysis for 2018 and they said that 
with more and more people doing digital printing, it's actually saved 40 billion liters of water. I mean, that's insane. So that's a very important part of it. And then energy um, is also minimized because it takes us a lot of energy to run the rotary machines and they also do the screens. And as with computers, they lose, use less energy in order to do it. Um, a comparison on the kilowatts, it was something like 0.14 kilowatts per meter versus a screen printer, printer that uses 0.5 per meter, which is, that's a lot. So it's very interesting. And also um, inks, um, you guys are probably very familiar when you fill your inkjet. Well, most of the inks now are water soluble. So um, my printer says they basically can wash these. They don't have to be filtered. They're not toxic and they can be recycled through the city. So there's a huge up, you know, uh, a, a huge upside to utilizing digital printing that way. Um, and those are probably the major categories. There's plenty more when you really just get into the nitty gritty of it because they also recycle any of the fabrics that are remnants and they recycle, um, obviously the water is recycled and the paper is recycled. Um, people have asked me if, and we have investigated trying to do this as far as using recycled fabric and recycled um, paper. Unfortunately, uh, the way recycled paper, it's still not been even. We've done many tests with this and it's um, always, there's been aberrations in the print and it's also been the same trying to use recycled fabric. So they haven't yet perfected that whole uh, bit of recycled fabric for, uh, you know, using again for digital printing, unfortunately. So we'll start with the two videos. Um, we'll start with the first video, Steve. And this video will show you how this, this is like around a uh, 60 inch um, and it's printing the actual print. And again, it's a high resolution print and you can see how detailed uh, the printing is. What's unusual for digital printing is that you can do photographs, which you can't do photographs in rotary printing or screen printing. The high lows and the definition that you get, it's the clarity is amazing and the vividness of the color. This is being printed on a very special paper that can be heat transferred onto fabric. And so this is our 3D line, which I will show you these samples, but this is the succulent being printed. And then the next video, this will show the paper, how it's being run through the printer. And then what it's done is it's heat, it's gassed onto, it's heat pressed onto the fabric. And you can see how vibrant the fabric is. Now for digital printing, for what we do, it has to be 100% polyester because in hospitality for hotels, you can't use natural fiber because um, the flame retardancy. There are strict guidelines for hotels that everything pass uh, flammability certification. So digital printing was actually a perfect um, alternative for us to do because they do use polyester and that's the only fabric they can use. And they all pass uh, what we call FR, flame retardancy uh, rules. So from there, um, we also, I'll go into a little bit of, I'll show you the samples. We did a, um, a garden series and they're three dimensional. Now these have to be hand stuffed in order to get the irregularity to make it look really natural. But again, see the detail. This one is probably our number one. It's a caladium leaf and it's got great color. And you can't get this from a screen print. And again, this one, I think because of the curvy linear and all of the detail, uh, this one has been our best seller. And then we have the philodendron leaf. This one has been really very, uh, one of our best sellers. It's the succulent. And again, you should see it's filling in the spikes on this. Oh my God, <laughs> it's crazy. And then this obviously is 
on every order because it's really got great detail. And so that series, we're calling it Photorealism 3D series, and we're planning to expand it um, into other concepts. And we're utilizing this as a digital print series. And so we're really excited. We've got an amazing reaction, and we've also gotten a reaction um, with a sales rep team too, because we've had to um, pivot to a certain degree. Hospitality is our primary business, but we are now pursuing wholesale retail uh, because of uh, the slowness of what's going on with hospitality, which we should see in the next year to two year more construction going on. So from there, I'll show you how it printed out on the fabric. I don't know whether you could see this. So this is yeah. an actual width of the fabric. And then this is how you can see how it's actually printed. And this is how it comes out of the printer. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you slides of hospitality. What we actually do in hospitality design and why it works with digital printing is because we do a lot of custom special signature looks that can only be done with this particular hotel. And most design firms that we work with are very good at researching the history of the city that the hotel is in, the history of uh the, the demographics and of the community. And they also try to use many artisans that are within that city to make it more of a community. And the design, it's more integrated as far as what it is, as far as what the city's all about. Here, um, Steve, can you roll the uh, slides and we'll just discuss. Now this one is a renovation. Um, it's called the Hotel Zena. It's in Washington, DC. And this one was really exciting because sometimes we know the full concept and sometimes it's cloaked and we only get parts of it when we're designing you know, uh, the decorative accessories, which is what we do for the hotels. Um, and this one was amazing because they did women's empowerment and they also did an art gallery called Her which had very, a lot of famous women. And the focal point was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, obviously from the Supreme Court. And this is a, a gigantic mural in the, public uh, in the public space in the lobby. And on closer inspection, we found out that it's actually comprised of organic tampons. So anyway. <laughs> Um, it was it was very interesting. So next slide. This is a very interesting mural. It's over 8,000 protest buttons uh, for women's equality. And they created this collage on the wall. And I'm pretty sure these were recycled buttons that they did. But again, taking a big concept and then the execution throughout the hotel, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout in the lobby, this public space, the restaurants, and then the guest rooms. Next slide. And so this one will show, you can't really see it, but the pillow is on the chair. Um, we, uh, we ended up doing, here, can you cut to me, Stephen? So this shows how we do the run. And this is actually a front of a pillow and a back. And this is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the artwork. And then we also did, they also did the highlights of her career. And I believe uh, this was Dawson Design Associates. Uh, Andrea Sheehan was the designer and she worked with Julia Coyle um, Art Associates and they produced the artwork and then we actually worked with them uh, to manufacture and produce the pillows. We also did, again, you can see the run and this is one repeat, Sonia Sotomayor and then her, quali her highlights of her career. And then these were sewn into, this is the front and back of a pillow. <clears throat> you can do the next slide now, Stephen, thanks. This is the W Hotel. 
uh, Los Angeles. And we were asked to do this very resort palm frond and it's really delicate. And if you notice, most of the bedding and hotels are white. People always ask me why and I go, well, because for cleaning for hotels, they found that within the last, in probably the last decade or 15 years, it really moved into this direction where it's all white duvets and sheeting because of the cleaning budget and also for safety, bed bugs and bacteria control. Uh, because most dryers and washers are usually double the heat of what a residential, what you use for washing and drying your clothes. So all of our decorative accessories frame and create the ambiance as well as the press for that particular guest room. So they become a very important part of shaping the signature look of a hotel and also how a guest responds to the room. And we get an enormous amount of calls from people wanting these pillows and you know they're owned by the hotels. I mean, these are all their copyrights and their trademark. Next slide. This was an interesting hotel. This one is a uh, in Cupertino, California. It is geared toward the tech community. It's located in Silicon Valley and in, um, in the Bay Area. And um, here, cut to me, Stephen. Um, you'll see that all of their prints, in order to keep it, this is a digital print, and they did it with this cyber look with all this binary coding. And they did this uh, image that they framed. And in the public areas, they did these, <laughs> I actually thought they were kind of scary, but uh, this is a binary code and these eyeballs. And we did it all across the public area, which was sort of this big room. And these eyeballs were looking in and out at you. And this was um, done by Introspect, uh, they were based in Marina Del Rey, and they did the design for that. Next slide. Uh, this is a, a West. This is a W Hotel in uh, West Los Angeles, and because of the film industry being very dominant, and a lot of the directors staying in this hotel, they did like a celluloid film which we digitally printed on the pillow. And the artwork on this was very, very like transparent and it was very delicate. And you can only do this with digital printing. Next slide. This one, actually a couple of you that are on the, um, I can recognize your names. I know that um, some of you have stayed at this hotel. This is the Sir Francis Drake, which is a very, it's a landmark building in San Francisco. And this pillow is huge. It's it's tall as me. It's about 60, I'm a little bit taller, but it's 60 inches by 16 inches high. Um, and it was really interesting. People actually stole this pillow. I don't even know how they could get it out of there because it's so freaking big. But um, Stephen, can you cut to me? The artwork on this is very interesting because what they utilized was Queen Victoria was the one that commissioned Sir Francis Drake. So what they did was Victorian lace, oh, sorry, and then the ship of Sir Francis Drake. And so you can see that it's a very, 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 very big pillow. And then they used a metallic back. Um, this was probably one of the most popular pillows I had newlyweds and people saying, oh my God, we want to land, you know, this was such a beautiful memory for us. We're on our honeymoon. Can you, can we buy this? So it was really, really interesting. Um, this particular pillow. Next slide. Uh, this is the SLS hotel. We worked with, uh, Avenue interior design. And um, a lot of the SLS hotels, we collaborated with Philippe Stark with decorative accessories. Um, this one in particular was with the designer of Avenue Interior Design, Andrea. And this was really interesting because it was a, um, they did an indoor outdoor concept and it was kind of like a modern stripe that they did throughout the hotel. Uh, Stephen, can you cut to me? So this was actually done on a canvas. 
So it's a cleaner looking fabric. Most of our fabrics, people want a linen looking fabric or a silk look. And those are my two most popular, but we get a lot of uh, demand for a cleaner, sort of what you would see uh, printing a painting on um, and doing it on a canvas. Next slide. This one um, is the Hotel Rouge, and this is in Washington, D.C. And this, the client wanted something that was very uh, like Fortisetti. And they wanted it kind of uh, in a collage fashion, but they wanted it sexy. So we had to hit a certain red. And a lot of times when we're working with color, we have to work with Pantones, which um, for you that are starting in design, Pantone is sort of like a color catalog that it has codes in it and you can actually match it so that when you're talking to someone across the country, they're on the same page about the exact shade of color that you're doing. Stephen, can you cut to me? So this will show sort of how it looked. And they did sort of a Greek news and then the alluring eye and then the sexy lips. And then again, this was with metallic on the back. So Again, it kind of gives you an overview as to how the hotels conceptually have a big picture as to what they want to do. And then it's cycled down to the furniture, the, uh, the lighting and all the decorative accessories. And we are oftentimes working on a project. Uh, renovations take one to two years, but if it's a new build out, like um, unfortunately I couldn't show you pictures for the new W Philadelphia we worked on. And that one took, um, it's still being worked on because of COVID, but it's like six years, I think. And um, imagine working on like the W Hollywood was our first project in 2005. We started that and it didn't go, it wasn't installed until five years later. So you're working on concepts so far back and you have to forecast so far ahead so it doesn't become dated. And that's another reason why people choose our company because um, fortunately with my fashion background, we're used to forecasting color, um, silhouette, and also kind of motifs and pattern direction so that by the time it hits the floor, which could be anywhere from two to five years later, it doesn't become old hat. And that becomes um, a real big challenge for a lot of the design firms. Um, I'll show you a few more that we've done. And this is like, this was a scumania in Washington state. It was a special tribe that used to do these special organic um, illustrations. And uh, a lot of the artwork that it's either given to us or we work with a lot of art studios globally and they all specialize in a particular type of style. So we pursue whoever it is that's important to that concept that we need to do in order to produce the artwork. And it usually we hit it right, you know, after at least the second take, but a lot of it is also is being fast and really listening to your client and understanding conceptually what they want. Um, this one was done with Avenue Interior Designs. And this one was an ethnic print that they did for a resort. And what was cool about this, again, this is a digital print but they did this special embroidery on it. <clears throat> I had shown them this kind of uh, whip stitch and we also did this for uh, the look and it looks incredible. So to give you some other ideas, mandala, I'll go through these fast, just so you can see the capabilities. A lot of water color and transparencies so a lot of painters can use this. Um, oh, I don't know where I put the other one. We also printed it on metallic. Let's see if I can show it. And this was, we did this for a Nashville property. Um, actually, I don't have the artwork. It was done for, it had Pee Wee Herman and Minnie Pearl on it for the Renaissance Hotel. But they did it on this metallic. And... Most of the time when you're printing, like we've done, um, we did a throw for the W Philadelphia. A lot of it is that, um, oh, thanks, Ellen. A lot of it is, is when you see it, it 
changes color if you're printing on a natural color versus white. So we try to print everything on white. Um, we did a throw in the natural and obviously it becomes a little bit more subdued. So when you're pitching color, um, the background really alters the coloration. So um, we do a lot of working, um, you know, with trying to hit exactly the color cast, but also the look that people want. Um, and we got a lot of questions as to why digital printing works for hospitality. A lot of it is when you're doing custom manufacturing, unlike apparel where you're doing six to 10 size ranges, your consumption for one item, one size pillow like this, you're going to be using 60, depending upon the quantity, 60 yards up to 250. Most screen printing and rotary, you're going to, you have minimums of 2,000 to 3,000 yards that you have to do. So if you, let's say, need 500 yards, you're wasting 1,500 to 2,500 yards of fabric. So this is a really big savings to be able to do all these custom runs. And we can do small runs from one yard up to, you know, 50, 100, you know, up to 1,000. We do throws and they usually take 1,000 to 1,500 yards. So it's really exciting being able to utilize that. The other plus is that it's on polyester um, and a big component for hotels is that it can be washed and that's, and it can be washed at high heat. And it's really important because no more do they want to do dry cleaning. I mean, we used to do a big faux fur business with the W Hotel. And as cutbacks came with cleaning, dry cleaning became a no-no. And there's that's also another why there's another movement toward all this white duvet and sheeting. So uh, it becomes really, really important um, when we are considering fabrics that they have to be washable because Outside of digital printing, we do, you know, a lot of other, we do customer, what we call customer zone fabric. They'll ship us fabric and we're doing custom specs for them. And we're also doing a lot of other uh, embroidery, special stitching, die cut. We do a lot of special techniques that a lot of companies don't do, um, mainly because fortunately with my fashion background, I was exposed to a lot of technical aspects and we've been able to use them in hospitality. So that's one of the exciting reasons why people like to use us. And they also like to use us because we do a line and we forecast ahead. So normally it's great because we're on the same page with them as far as trying to come up with new ideas or trying to execute what their vision is for the hotel. And that's really, really, really important. They do not want to be sitting hours and hours trying to get you to understand a concept. Um, they don't have the time and they don't want to waste the time. So um, we have great clients. It's a great industry. And so um, I feel very fortunate that um, it was something that we actually were, we fell into it because the W saw us at a, a jury selected show and they loved our line and they bought the line. And from there, we were asked to do custom manufacturing. And I knew nothing about hospitality. So we kind of uh, blossomed into this new business and it was really, really exciting. And that kind of gives you a quick overview of digital printing. So um, well, that's I'm curious great. to hear all your questions. Well, Keo, um, Max had asked earlier, you know, the types of the typical fabrics that you use for printed pillows. But um, so you've got all kinds. You said polyester, but there's, you know, the Nashville Hotel uh, is very sort of metallic looking. Are those easy to wash for them? Or are those, a, are those a yeah. one off? Yeah, they're 100% polyester and they can be washed. And most of the, we have a book, um, uh, a lot of, we have something like 300 fabrics that can be used for digital printing. Um, and with apparel, I mean, obviously you have to have a lot because of the diversity of what you're designing. <clears throat> We're restricted on what we can do because we can't do delicate fabrics. We have to pass not right. only flame retardancy, but we also have to pass double rubs and double rubs basically is an abrasion test. So for residential, for your house, they do a test and they rub the fabric. Many times 
in the small area to test, and it has to pass 30,000. 15,000 is minimum for residential, usually 30. But for hospitality, it's 50,000 double rubs. So it's really different and it's really stringent on furniture because you don't want to have a sofa that you're seating a million people every day in a lobby and have a hole growing. So um, we have a lot of specialty hospitality fabrics that are utilized. But to get back to Max's point, I would say our number one fabrics are definitely, and I can show you, it's this linen type of fa fabric. It looks like linen. It's 100% polyester. And then this, which is a silk looking fabric and it's 100% polyester. And again, these can all be washed. And uh, we actually recommend anything that's digital printing, di digitally printed. What they do is they take out the insert and then they turn it inside out and then they put it into the washer and then they dry and the, then the dryer. I don't know. Does that answer his complete question? Okay. I think so. Um, he also is asking if you do other wall coverings, are you just doing the pillows or do you do other types of wall coverings? And do you do those in digital printing? Yeah, we've been asked, uh, we actually work with Jonathan Adler. Most of you recognize him. He, and um, I knew him from New York and we actually worked on the his first hospitality uh, project, which was uh, Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. And we did a wall covering for him. And we didn't install it. We just did the print and then they installed it. And so we've done like uh, matching. Um, in fact, I think on this print, we did a matching like wall panel that went right next to the pillow. So to answer your question, yes, we've done um, custom fabric for curtains. We won't make the curtains. It's a very special process in my company. We don't uh, do that because the install for curtains is like insane. And so uh, we usually get asked to develop the, uh, the fabric. So yes, we do different things. We do throws, we do custom seat cushions, so we do a lot of things. Anything that's textile driven, we can do. So how long are those colors gonna gonna last? They last longer with digital printing. I mean, obviously in a hotel industry, you know, it has to last a good long time and a lot of washes. So is that yeah, another advantage of digital to, printing? Absolutely. It, it's very long lasting and there's no fading because it's embedded in the fabric, which is really awesome. Now it's not um, outdoor fabric though. Outdoor fabric will still, if you expose these to sun, um, direct sunlight, it still will probably fade it. We've never tested it, but um, it's not really, it's not Sombrella. And Sombrella is a copyrighted name for outdoor fabric that actually uh, deals with ultraviolet rays and it won't fade and it's also set to handle weather. Uh, you need special kind of treatments for that type of fabric uh, for treatments outdoors. Well, Seema was asking if the print process is called dye sublimation or is that something similar? Yeah, it's um, it's similar. It's slightly different. Sometimes uh, dye sublimation can be done directly. Um, this actually has it's actually called dispersion digital printing. Um, so it's slightly different. There's actually a whole uh, code of digital printing that is done, and they're all slightly different. Not too different, but um, they all come under the category of dye sublimation and digital printing. They're pretty, pretty much the same. Great. Joe is asking, can the polyester fabric be recycled? In other words, use it as a raw material to create new fabric or use it for some other purpose. I don't imagine yes, polyester is very. <laughs> well, polyester me. can be retreated. And um, what they do with the remnants of the fabrics, uh, polyester is recycled and that can be redone. What they do is they take all of the scraps and they actually reformulate them into other fabrics. 
And that's become a really big deal in the mills. They take all of their remnant fabrics and then they recycle them. So um, that's a very dominant thing that they do. And there's a lot of companies that if you're looking for companies that are certified, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, actually only do what we call recycled fabrics, uh, they actually have tests that you can actually know that they actually are recycled. Um, <clears throat> I think about 10 years ago, we did recycled bags. They were totally recycled from uh, water bottles. And it really was a learned wow. lesson. It was so fascinating um, how the process is done and the certification that goes behind it. It's very stringent and also everything is different on how it's evaluated because if you're talking about recycling or sustainability, it starts from the time that, that the farm, sustainable farming, the yarns get tested, can be recycled or it can be organic. I mean, there's all of these points that go into it. Um, we actually have a system in hotels that's called LEADS and what that means is leadership and energy environmental design. And what that is, it's a point system for hotels. And it basically is you can get certified, you can be uh, silver, gold, and platinum. And that all goes into how sustainable the hotel is. When I went to Maldives, they gave me a tour because they knew that I was very interested in this. And I think Karen is on there because Karen was with me. And we did a tour of this uh, facility on how they recycled. They recycled their water, how they re did compost with all their waste and uh, all their solar power that they did at this resort. So everything was, all of that rates into, it's a Cineva re resort and all of that goes into a point system in order to achieve the level of certification. So you are um, primarily a commercial business, but during the pandemic, you had to bob and weave like everybody else, which is kind of where we came, came up with the, how you came up with these beautiful 3D pillows. If you, but you also, um, you also make sure that you are still LA local as much as you can. You have um, dedicated sewers. And how did you keep those folks busy? And how did you bob and weave during the pandemic itself? Uh, that's actually a really good question because um, a lot of you I know uh, bought masks from us and we actually um, spoke with the FDA and followed Christian Siriano as far as how they were doing masks. And we did a three layer mask, which was um, an exterior fabric and then a filter and then um, cotton on the inside. And we got it approved through the FDA. We were also very lucky because um, we worked with a mill that everyone was trying to get this filter fabric. And there was a list of people trying to get it and it was sold out. And they, they started actually regulating the fabric. And we were lucky because we had already done business with them on other fabrics. So they knew us. And so we managed to get the filter. We produced close to the... It was like crazy. What we did was we made the mask in order to keep our LA sewers in business. And um, all these sewing teams, what we did was we didn't take any money. We just wanted them to stay in business. So we actually gave them the work to do it. And we were fully transparent about the cost of the mask. And then um, obviously the shipping costs which for everything went USPS priority mail, because at that time, everyone, this was April 12th, when I think we debuted it, everyone needed a mask right away because there weren't any masks. So um, we responded to it as fast as we could. And it was really something because I told many of you the story. It's actually kind of a funny story in a sad context because I would drive down and everything was in lockdown and I had my mask on and I would pull up to the factory and he would literally bang on my trunk. I would pop the trunk. He would dump the bag in and then he would shut the lid. He'd bang on the lid and it was like a drug deal. And he would take, I would basically get the bag and then I would drive back to my home. And then I was putting them 
into these envelopes, these priority mail envelopes. And I think the first week we had over 2000 orders. And the first day that we showed the mask on our e-commerce site, it crashed the system. It totally, people were calling me, I can't, I can't get in. I, what's going on? And it was pretty insane. And I have pictures of my entire floor of my living room covered with envelopes. It was really, really an experience. And I mean, thank God everyone was safe, but it was quite an experience to try and respond and get things done. And I have to thank the United States Postal Service because they were really <laughs> great. Um, they sent me all these boxes. They said, what are you shipping? And they went in the back and they gave us all of the these envelopes in order to send them out priority mail. So we were very lucky because a lot of people really, really helped us. It was really amazing. And so, yeah, we responded that way and we've come out with different little capsule groups to sell on our site, at, uh, our e-commerce site at dragon88.com. And so the pillows are for sale at, um, on the site themselves because some folks had asked where to get them. Um, and that's your, so you work more commercial, but now you're doing, you know, straight to consumer type of things. And then um, obviously these pillows are there. Abby, Abby was asking what your, your favorite design is. Some of your favorites. Um, I, I'd have to, I actually have it, but it's on the top shelf and I have to jump on top of the sofa in order to get it. Yeah, don't but, do that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do, but um, <laughs> my favorite designs really, um, we're doing a lot of, uh, I think I have it here. We're doing these new lumbar pillows. I love these. And I've stayed at the Drake Hotel. Those pillows are about the size of the room. That's it. Exactly. There you go. So we're doing these, we actually do them six feet. And I don't know, Chrissy, I don't know whether you can see this. So what we did was we did the special lumbar ones. So you can lean against these. They give you back support, but then they have pockets so that you can stick your cell phone, a magazine, your favorite book. But we have a gigantic one that is six feet, that's five feet across, that goes across your bed so that you can put your kids' toys in it. You can lean, you can read, because a lot of people were coming up to us and they go, can you do like a back pillow? Because I'm in my bedroom all the time with my kids and I need a store space. I need a place to put my remote, my phone, my iPad. So we devised that. So we call them reading pillows. So uh, those are also on the site. And that was Great. something it took us a long time to design it properly, but we kind of, we're trying to do things that are really functional that help people in their daily lives. Um, you know, it's, really thinking, you know, um, how people function in their homes and what they need. Because quite frankly, a lot of people aren't working. So it's not like people want to spend the money. So they have to need to spend the money. So we really are trying to respond to a lot of questions and a lot of requests from people. Well, people certainly wanted to spend money during the pandemic on, on things for the home. So that, that's perfect timing. Um, and I know you came out with those a little while ago, so that um, those are great. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Now's the oh, time. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people are done. Oh, Karen. Karen wants to know where you get your inspiration. <laughs> um, from traveling, and uh, I love traveling and also I'm a big uh, cultural fan. So wherever I travel, I try to absorb the culture as much as possible. I'm actually, during the pandemic, I tried to learn a lot of languages. Uh, I attempted, I started Korean, I started um, Spanish and what was the, oh, and I kind of redid my French and I'm terrible at it, but I really feel it's important to try and speak the language when you're in the country because it really helps try and understand and so i get a lot of inspiration from the people within these countries because they're all really i mean the cultures are also very interesting and it can be almost anything i mean i always tell people that they need to be aware of their surroundings and um art has a big uh influence on me i myself am trained in ceramic sculpture 
and I love, you know, seeing art. I love talking to artists and being inspired. Um, but I think you can get it anywhere. You can be inspired by almost anything, nature, you know, hiking. Um, I love being in the water. So I'm very into the ocean um, and food. I mean, um, of course, half of my friends that are foodies are online. And so uh, food can be just as emotional and inspirational also too. So it can be almost anything. I try to be receptive to a lot of different things. I've really gotten back into music again, which um, I found was really, really important during the pandemic um, because I'm a pretty up person, but I have to tell you the pandemic definitely wore, it wears you down <laughs> and music became very, very important as well as you know creativity. Um, I yes, try to I, be as creative as on um, the downturn. Sorry? No, I was just going to say I had Alexa play Haydn all the time. So I, I totally <laughs> get it. Um, can, so can you, Mary wants to know if you can um, digital print on cotton. I realize for your industry that um, that you stick to polyester, but can you print on other types of things for small things that don't necessarily have that requirement? Yes, actually, that's kind of uh, within the last, I'd say, five, eight years, more and more of the organic or natural fibers are being digitally printed on because obviously in apparel, they're trying to force that issue. They really want natural fabrics. The problem is, is that they don't print vibrantly. They become very dull casted. So this is something that they're really trying to improve and develop. So to answer Mary's question, that's very, very true. They're trying to uh, do natural fabrics. And it, and it makes sense because the major consumers of digital printing are obviously going to be in the apparel industry. And so because they're turning things so quickly. So yes, to answer your question, that's a very big category that they're trying to develop. It's just not perfected yet. And... Um Tom wanted to know how long, what's the life of a printed pillow in a hotel and commensurately, you know, if it isn't a hotel or if, or if it's on some, some other kind of printing, you know, what kind of life do you get out of those? Uh, it's for, for a long time. I mean, almost to the full life of that concept. I mean, um, we, I've not experienced, you know, most of these prints are over, this one was from our first collection and it's probably about 12, 13 years old and you can't, and there's no fading and there's no kind of aberration on it. So they last as long as you want. And again, what they're doing now is um, a, actually a good question that comes from that is how long conceptually do hotels keep? Normally they try to switch them out within like, you know, uh, sometimes three to five years. And they're constantly trying to renovate and come up with new concepts because, you know, as people get familiar with a concept, they want something new. And also hotels, they get so much traffic from people. Things wear out really quickly. So probably average five years to seven years to renovate. Definitely. So somebody had asked if these are available in an outdoor version, but I, I feel like you might have answered that before because it's mm. not the type of material that lasts. But if you could address that, maybe I misunderstood. On the outdoor, um, unfortunately, people can use, people can do it and they can bring the pillows outdoors, but they won't really last unless you bring them back in. Um, the fabrics that go into outdoor fabrics, and I, one of the people I think that's on here, they actually bought some outdoor uh, pillows from us. A lot of it is very specific because it's solution dyed acrylic. It does not fade. It can take heat, and it also can take, um, they actually measure the amount of hours that it can take ultraviolet rays. Um, these, you can't do this with this type of product. Um, right they would, you could keep them out obviously for a couple of days, but um, if you were to leave them out for like a week or so, I think you would definitely see something happen. Right. To the good. We've never tested them, but it's just not made for outdoors. And most uh, hotels, um, we do a lot of public spaces, outdoor spaces, and they have to redo almost every two years or a year because 
Um, if they leave all the cushions out, they just don't last long, and especially if they get snow. I mean, it just, it wears out the fabrics and then they split. Well, um, we've got some love here. Um, everyone's loving the pillows and your bold choices and designs. And uh, I just want to thank you for myself and for LAPL for sharing this photorealistic printing and how it's used in the hospitality industry. I had heard about the leads, but I wasn't sure what that was. So thanks for straightening me out on that. Um, and <laughs> I, I always felt like, you know, I just didn't really know that the hospitality industry could be sustainable. I have visions of them just throwing this stuff out. So it's really great to know that one, you're reducing it before it ever gets out to them Two, that, you know, they have that it, it lasts and lasts and lasts there. And three, that you're now producing things for uh, the rest of us and, and that these gorgeous pillows. So um, thanks again from LAPL. And thanks to everybody for coming to our Maker Talk tonight. I appreciate it. And uh, go to dragon88.com if you're interested in the pillows. Thank you all so much. And uh, thanks to Keo. And I want to thank all of you because I recognize a lot of names on the chat. And I really want to, I want to thank all the support and the kindness and uh, you participating. It really means a lot to me. And I am seeing you on there. And um, that was really terrific. Some of you threatened to do some crazy questions. So I was a little nervous, but I wanted to thank you. And I wanted to especially thank Chrissy for the invitation to talk as well as uh, the Los Angeles Public Library and Vivian and Steven and all the people that helped to put it together. So it was pretty, it was really fun. So I thank you again. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>